When we're starting out in logic and we want to understand what sentences of logic mean and we want to test whether arguments in logic are good or bad, the number one tool we're going to use is truth tables. Let's see how they work. <laughs> everyone, welcome back to Attic Philosophy. On the channel we're talking about all areas of philosophy from metaphysics to social issues. In this series of videos we are beginning to look at how we learn logic right from scratch. In this video we're going to focus on truth tables, what they are and how we start using them to do interesting things in logic. Truth tables are a really good way of showing and allowing us to calculate what a sentence means. And they allow us to do that in a step-by-step -step way. So even if we're dealing with a very complex sentence, we can work through calculating whether it's true or false, what it means in a simple step-by-step -step way. How do we do that? Well, let me explain the basic idea behind truth tables. So the basic idea behind truth tables is we're going to look at all the different ways in which the P's, the Q's, the R's, the primitive sentences might be true or false. We look at each one of those combinations and then we work out, we calculate on that basis whether the sentence we're interested in would be true or false. Okay, so if P's true and Q's false, let's say, then we work out whether the sentence we're interested in would be true or false in that case. We do that for each of the combinations of T's and F's. Once we've done that, that's our truth table. And that is our account of what the sentence means. OK, so it's important to note here that when we're talking about the meaning of a sentence, we're talking about it in quite a specific sense. We're talking about whether that sentence would be true or false in specific circumstances. So given that the P's and the Q's are true or false or whatever, would that sentence be true or false? There is a whole philosophical theory of meaning behind this, analysing meaning in terms of truth conditions. However, for the purpose of logic, forget about all that. Just take truth tables to be a way of working out, a way of calculating whether a sentence would be true or false. So let me now show you what a truth table looks like in outline. Suppose we're interested in some sentence A, and suppose that sentence is made up of two sentence letters, P and Q. Since there's two sentence letters there, there's going to be four lines in our truth table, because there's four different ways of assigning T's and F's truth and falsity to P and Q. They might both be true. It might be that P is true and Q is false. It might be the other way around. So P is false and Q is true, or they might both be false. And the idea is we will go through each of those lines and we'll say, OK, if P is true and Q is true, what's A going to be? We'll work it out. Similarly, if P is true and Q is false, what's A? If the other way around, what's A? And if they're both false, what's A? So we'll go through each line and we'll work out a value, T or F, for the sentence we're interested in. How do we do that? How do we calculate what value A should have? Well, to do that, we are going to have a basic truth table for each of the connectives. So we're going to have five basic truth tables for not, and, or, if then, if and only if. We can think of these as spelling out the meaning of those connectives. But primarily for our purposes, they're going to be a way of calculating the T's and the F's in more complex sentences. So let me take you through these five basic truth tables. Starting with the easiest, not. Not basically just means we reverse the truth value. OK, if we take a true sentence, its negation, that is the not version, is false. And if we take a false sentence, then negating it, putting not in front of it, will give us a true sentence. If we're interested in not P and P is true, then not P is going to be false. And if P is false, not P is going to be true. That is the truth table for not. Really simple. So not reverses the truth value, OK? If we negate a sentence, we reverse the truth value. We change it from a T to an F or an F to a T. OK, so let's look at the truth table for AND. Think about what AND means. AND basically means that they're both true. Both P and Q are true on their own. So its truth table is going to look like this. When 
P and Q are both true, the whole sentence P and Q is going to be true, but when one or the other is false, P and Q is going to be false, and when they're both false, P and Q is going to be false. So the truth table for and goes true, false, false, false. Nice and simple. Now let's look at or, disjunction. Think about the meaning of or. It basically means that at least one of them is true. Either P is true or Q is true. Important case, or they're both true. Okay, so it's P is true, Q is true, or both of them are true. So if we look at the truth table, it's going to look like this. When at least one of them is true, P or Q is true, the only way it can be false is when they're both false. So the truth table for all goes T, 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 F. At least one of them is true. So the case that sometimes confuses people here is the case where P and Q are both true. So we are taking or to be inclusive, okay? It means either one or the other or both of them together. There's three ways or can be true. We could instead deal with an exclusive or, that would mean one or the other, but not both, but we're not going to do that here. We're taking or to be inclusive, one, the other, or both. So there's three ways of being T and just one way of being F. So far, things have been pretty simple. When we look at if, then, things are going to get a little bit more complicated. It's not actually so clear to say exactly what if then means in English. And actually, we're not going to do a perfect job of rendering it in a truth table, but we're going to do our best. If if A then B is true, it can't be the case that A is true, but B is false. Okay, if A was true, but B is false, we wouldn't say it's the case that, well, if A then B. What if then is basically saying is it's ruling out the case where A is true, but B is false. So we would want to say that if A then B is false in this case, when A is true and B is false. And we're going to say in the other cases, it's true. So looking at the truth table, this is the case that we were looking at where P is true and Q is false. So let's make that one false and all the other cases true. Now, like I said, this isn't maybe a perfect way of capturing if then as it crops up in English, it's the best we can do in a truth table. So some things there that it's worth pointing out when they're both true, if P then Q is going to be true, that, that seems right. When P is false and Q is true, it's going to be true. Yep, yeah, that, that seems right. But when they're both false, again, we're going to say that if P then Q is true. Maybe this case doesn't seem quite so intuitive. So basically, what this boils down to is if Q is true, then if P then Q is going to be true. And also, if P is false, then if P then Q is going to be true as well. So there's basically two ways, two different independent ways of making if P then Q true. Either we make the P false or we make the Q true. And that kind of aligns with what we were saying before. We're basically ruling out the possibility of P being true and Q being false. That's the only way for if P then Q to be false. Okay, so that's if then. Let's finally look at if and only if. Remember, we abbreviate this to if. This one's easier. It's basically saying they have the same truth value. They have the same truth value. There's two ways that can happen. Either they're both true or they're both false. So if they're both true or both false, P if and only if Q will be true. But if they have a different truth value, like here or here, then P if and only if Q will be false. One thing we're going to discover later is this is actually the same as saying that P if and only if Q means the same as if P then Q and if Q then P. Maybe that's not obvious, but we'll, we'll work that out later. OK, so there we have five basic truth tables, one for each connective, and we can summarise them by putting them all into one table. One for not P, one for P and Q, one for P or Q, one for if P then Q, and one for P if and only if Q. And maybe one thing I should point out here is I've presented this in terms of sentences with P's and Q's, but this works for 
any sentence. So it doesn't just have to be not P or not Q or whatever. Any sentence whose main connective is a negation will have a truth table that works like this. So we could present this information like this. So now we're looking at combinations of truth values to A and B. So if we've already worked out the truth value of some complex sentence A and some other complex sentence B, we could then extend that to working out the truth value of not A, A and B, A or B, if A then B, and A if and only if B. That's basically what we're going to be doing now. Let's look at how to do that in practice. How do we build complex truth tables? Okay, so working out the T's and the F's when we have complex sentences to deal with. Let's have a look. So suppose we're interested in this sentence here, P and Q, or not P and not Q. To draw its truth table, first of all, we write the sentence down over here on the right. And then because it's made up of two sentence letters, P and Q, we write P and Q over on the left. And below the line, we write out all the combinations of T's and F's. Okay, there's two sentence letters there, P and Q, so we've got four lines, both true, one true, the other false, the other way around, both false. We're going to work through this sentence sub-sentence by sub-sentence. We're going to do one at a time. So we're going to start with the and, then we're going to look at the not, the other not, and then this and, and then we're going to put it all together and do the whole sentence. Okay, so let's work through that. Let's look at P and Q first. P and Q means they're both true. So we've got to look at the cases where P is true and Q is true. So our truth table is going to look like this. So there is one line where P and Q are both true. And in the other cases, this sentence will be false. Now let's look at these negations, negation of P and the negation of Q. So there we're just going to change. We're going to invert the truth value of P and the truth value of Q. So they are going to look like this. What I'm doing here is I'm writing those truth tables all within the same table, and I'm writing the T's and the F's underneath the connective that we're working on. And I've, I've kind of written these ones pretty small so we can see kind of what we're building up to, leaving plenty of space for the stuff that we're really interested in. Next, we're going to look at the and here. So now we're looking at not P and not Q. So and just means they're both true. So we're looking at lines where they're both true based on the workings that we've already done. So there's one case in which they're both true. And in all the other cases, they're not both true. So we would put an F there. So this line is going to look like this. OK, one T and the others are Fs. Now we get to work up to the whole sentence itself. This is a disjunction. We're going to write our answers here. And because it's a disjunction and all we're interested in when we've got a T on one side or a T on the other. Now we have to be a bit careful here because which lines are we looking at? We're comparing the two lines we've just written, as in we're comparing this side and this side. So it's this column here and this column here. We're looking at when we have a T in either or of those columns. So there's one here and there's one here, but there's not one in those two cases. So our column here is going to go like this. T, F, F, T. And that is our final truth table for that sentence. I've written this column here in red just as a kind of a note to self that this is my final answer to what is the truth table for this sentence. So what all this stuff here is working out, this is the final answer. OK, so if the question says, what is the truth table for this sentence? My final answer is that stuff. So truth tables allow us to calculate the truth value of a sentence, a complex sentence, given all the different combinations of T's and F's to its primitive sentence letters. But we can do more things with a truth table. We can understand the concept of a tautology. A tautology is a sentence that is true whatever, true in any case. However the world turns out, that sentence would be true. How does a truth table Help with that? Well, a truth table for a tautology would be one in which every line is a T. Look at this truth table again. This is the one that we just worked at. But let's look at what happens if we change this and symbol here to an or. 
What would happen then? This column here wouldn't be right anymore. That was the right column for and. And let's work it out again. It's an or. So we're looking at when we have a T in either this column or this column. So our answer is going to go F, T, T, T. Because there's a T, there's a T and there's a T. But in this top line, there's no T. So we put an F there as our answer. OK, now we do the whole sentence. It's a disjunction. So again, we're looking at whether we have at least one T on either side. So we're looking here and we're looking here and we're saying, do we have a T on either side? Yeah, there's a T there, there's a T there, there's a T there and there's a T there. So what we're going to find is we're going to put a T in every line in this column. That's a tautology. Every line in its truth table has a T in it. In other words, there is no way this sentence can be false. However, the P's and the Q's come out, this sentence is going to be true. That's not so surprising because this sentence says either they're both true or P's false or Q's false. Either they're both true or one of them's false. And it's fairly obvious if you think about it that that is something that has to be the case. Either they're both true or one of them or the other is false. That's why that sentence is a tautology. OK, now let's look at a slightly different example. Sticking with the same sentence, what would happen if we changed this or symbol here to be instead an and symbol? What would happen then? This column here wouldn't be right anymore. Now we've got an and, we're interested in do we have a T in both this column and this column? And what you'll notice is you do have some T's in, in each column, but when there's a T here, there's an F here. And when there's a T here, there's an F here. So what we're going to find is we're going to have an F there, there, there and there. Every line in this truth table is an F. That's not a tautology, that is a contradiction. We could say it's an unsatisfiable sentence. They mean the same thing, contradiction, unsatisfiable. Or we could say it's a logical falsehood. It's something that's always false. Every line of this truth table has an F in it. And again, if we think about what that sentence means, it's not so surprising that it's a logical falsehood because it's saying that both P and Q are true, but also at least one of them is false. So it's saying that they're both true, but that one of them's false, and you just can't have that. So that's why the sentence is contradictory. That's why it's a logical falsehood. So what we've seen there are three ways of classifying a sentence using truth tables. It might be a tautology, that is all T's. It might be a logical falsehood, that is all F's. And it might be neither. It might be neither a tautology nor a logical falsehood. It might have some T's and some F's in its column. We're going to call that logically contingent. OK, we're going to say that such sentences are satisfiable. So they are satisfied in the sense that sometimes they're true, but they're not always true in a way that a tautology would be. They're logically contingent. That is it for this short introduction to truth tables. In the next video, we're going to look at how to do more things with truth tables, and we're going to look at how to use truth tables to test arguments. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying this series of videos on introductory logic. If you are, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to get updates about more of these videos, hit the bell icon. OK, that is it for today. I hope to see you back soon. <laughs>